Thank you, Madam Chair. And just, just so that I can be very clear on a back and forth also that I had earlier, and I want to ask you the same question. Please. So just the fact that we have guidelines does not mean that medical professionals will not be able to take into account whether their patient was a smoker or whether their patient has diabetes. I mean, the, just the mere fact that there are guidelines does not limit that kind of care, correct? You are 100% spot on. And let me give you an easy, because a smoker is going to have delayed recovery. After an orthopedic procedure, if there's bone healing, a smoker is going to have anywhere from a 30 to a 300% delay in healing. So yeah, that has to be factored in. That's going to allow for certain other devices if they cite the guidelines properly and request it properly in advance, that will further the healing, the bone stimulators and the like. Let's take it some, something even more simple. Let's look at body habitus and age. Somebody who is 400 pounds versus somebody that's 120 pounds and both have the same age, normal range of motion is going to be different for the two. That has to be factored in, because obviously the somebody who's somewhat larger is going to have less range of motion, so it becomes their new normal. So the guidelines specifically allow for those factors and those variances, and in the guidelines there are procedures on how to document those exceptions, which then further get baked to hopefully into the regulations that would be associated with the treatment guidelines statute. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair.